Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I am Kyra Mitchell Lewis. How's everyone doing out there? Are you guys being gentle with yourselves? Are you giving yourself grace? Are you giving that same grace to your significant others, your children, your coworkers? Um, how are those DIY projects going? Are you still working on those? We are. (laughs) We're actually about to paint our fence in the next couple of weeks. So um, we definitely sort of keep plowing through DIYs. Um, And if you're still, you know, working from home or sheltering in place, are you finding times throughout the day where you go outside, you get some sun? Are you giving yourself an opportunity to try and separate you know, your time from, you know, working and then having your personal life, if it's all sort of running together, are you? (laughs) Well, you know, I I definitely know that uh, life in itself is filled with a lot of uncertain things. And, you know, obviously right now what we're going through, it definitely is a time of uncertainty for a lot of us. You know, a lot of things are outside of our control, but that doesn't mean that we cannot, you know, find ways to cope with it and to definitely give ourselves, you know, some peace about um, what we're in the midst of. Today, I am going to have a discussion with um, Corey Lee, who is a licensed therapist and the owner of Happily Ever After Counseling in Atlanta, Georgia. And she is also my therapist. So I'm really excited to have her join us today. Um, You know, I know you're saying she's always super excited. (laughs) Well, I am. (laughs) Ask anybody. And I am talking with my hands as I always do. Um, but no, and un, but honestly speaking, um, she and I have been talking, you know, this whole time just about anxiety and coping and um, just things to do to feel um, connected to your families, even if you can't see them, connected to your friends if you can't see them, and just, you know, looking at opportunities to. Um, use the time that we have right now, you know, for growth and just to look inside of ourselves and see how we can come out of it on the other side as better people, better versions of ourselves. So um, I hope that you will find this to be an informative discussion um, today. So sit back guys and um, we'll be right back with um, Dr. Corey after this break. Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I am Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and I am so excited to finally welcome Corey Lee to the podcast. As I mentioned, (laughs) as I mentioned before the break, she is a licensed therapist and the owner of Happily Ever After Counseling in Atlanta, Georgia. She is fabulous, and she is also my personal therapist. So welcome, Dr. Corey. Oh my goodness, that lead in. Look, I'm all jumping in. Hey. (laughs) Right. And you know, obviously, you know, I'm going to town with my hands over here. I need you to introduce me everywhere I go, like everywhere. Like if I go to eat at a restaurant, I want you to introduce me to the place that I go. (laughs) Right. I'm like, I'm good hype man. Hype woman, hype person. Yes. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Yes. This is, um, it's so timely because obviously, you know, right now, as, um, we were just talking on Saturday, um, you know, I looked at the calendar and I went, oh my God, I'm coming up on my one year anniversary. I know. I and, believe, when I read that, I thought 
that time went so fast and you have made I mean I should have known it feels like we've like known each other forever but I was like it's been a year congratulations you've done the work yeah so I'm so was so excited and I was like oh my god I feel like I should have like a a one year party to celebrate (laughs) or then we need to commemorate it and honestly you brought it to my attention because I thought I need to track that I need to set up a way in my system so I can at least acknowledge and affirm that for people so that you get a good idea. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad that you're here um, today because we really, I want to share you with um, my community. I feel like I get so much and I have gained and learned so much about myself just from having you in my life. And you've been such a positive impact on me and helping me to definitely establish boundaries, but also just during these times of uncertainty for everyone. I mean, it's just great to have someone um, like you there to listen and to sort of guide us through and help me (laughs) help me stay and keep my sanity during these times. Yes, yes. Well, I am so you are right. This is the most. Well, first of all, I'm so grateful um, that we did meet. And these times are so overwhelming for people like I mean just like you said just maintaining sanity if you've done that up until this point like I know we don't stop and affirm ourselves enough I want everybody at the sound of my voice like pat yourself on the back because we have made it we're not all the way through the pandemic but we are at least what is this four months March April May June what is this we've been is that five months since March yes Oh yes. You got to pat yourselves on the back. You have to stop this, pause it. You get back to it, but affirm that you have done a great job and then press play and then keep listening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, before we dive into um, our discussion, why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Okay. Awesome. Well, my name is Corey. Um, currently, I live in Atlanta. I have five children, two dogs and a husband. Um, I think my husband and I, we always say it's like we have six kids. He says I'm like his sixth (laughs) child. And I say he's like my sixth child. But um, I have a lot of fun. First of all, I get to wake up every morning and literally do my dream job. Like people that have known me forever have, they always say like, oh my God, you are living the dream, aren't you? Because you're doing what you want to do and getting paid for it. And I'm like, yeah, I am within my passion and purpose. And one of the biggest things about me is I really try to inspire people to understand that you can find your passion and purpose. If it's not in your current job, maybe not your nine to five, but from five to midnight, find your passion and purpose and pour yourself all into this. This is why I love this podcast. I love Glow Up Girl in general, because this is your passion and purpose to help people and to really guide young women and really empower women. And that's why you're so happy and intrinsically fulfilled. So I would say, you know, not only is my purpose to provide therapeutic services, but just to provide the overall message, find your joy. In this world that we live in, that is so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs half the time, you better have some joy. You better have some joy to to stabilize, (laughs) right? Right. (laughs) But that's pretty about me. Yeah, that's about me. That's me in a nutshell. I love to be happy. I love to spread joy. I love to really, truly, intrinsically be happy, not just Instagram fake happy. I like to be truly happy. (laughs) And I like to try to inspire others to find their joy as well. And I will just go by her and say, guys, that she does not look like she's had five children. <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> for our discussion today, um, I know we talked about we want to try and give people some sense of a framework that they can use if they are struggling or they feel uncertain around these times. So we've sort of broken it out into a couple areas and obviously we'll just sort of free free flow with where the conversation takes us, but looking at anxiety, um, connection, and then also looking at um, growth, because I know for me personally, while this is an uncertain time, it has also been an opportunity for me to personally look at myself and grow. And just, um, I think 2020, as people keep saying, like, let's just throw it in the trash, let's get rid of it. But I just sort of feel like it's the year I didn't know I needed. Right. Ooh, I love that. This is the year I didn't know I needed. This is the time 
that we did not know we needed. I love that. Yes. So it's definitely been a an eye-opening experience for me. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what else happens this year, you know, um, as you try to find, like you said, finding the joy in it. So that's what we're here today to try and help people do is to just turn a little from the anxiousness of it all and find your joy. Yeah. So let's start with anxiety. Uh, you know, overall, is it is it okay to feel anxious about things? Oh, yeah. Right now? Yes, we all do. As human beings, anxiety is an emotion. Anxious is an emotion. We all feel this emotion. It, it results in an unsettling feeling in our body. But overall, we all have moments of anxiety. Listen, the most confident person you know at work or maybe, you know, somebody getting up in, in your church and, and somebody having to say something, you know, in front of a group of people, they're going to experience anxiety, especially if it's something new. Anytime we're outside of our comfort zone, we will experience that anxious feeling. That's okay. That's your, your body's normal response to you being in an unfamiliar or nerve wracking situation. Now, when it becomes concerning is an, when you have a disorder. So like an anxiety disorder, that's different. So a lot of people walk around my daughter, one of my, one of my kids was like, mom, I have anxiety. I said, yeah, baby, we all do. <laughs> like anxiety <laughs> is a natural response. Now an anxiety disorder is when that anxiety is like persistent and chronic and that anxious feeling never goes away. So like you and I may have anxious emotion, that's fine. Honor it, figure out where it's coming from. But if it doesn't dissipate, if it does not leave you, then that might be a sign to you that you need to seek out a professional because that could be an anxiety disorder. I'm talking chronic, persistent. It never goes away. Like you got days and days of this pit in your stomach of not feeling at ease. That's a disorder. That could be a disorder. I'm not diagnosing you because I don't know, but I'm saying it could be a disorder. So have somebody, a professional look into that and help process that with you. Okay. And what about, what do you suggest for people that are, you know, I'll just use myself as the example in these scenarios. Um, obviously, you know, I told you a couple of weeks ago, now I've been in the house. I haven't gone anywhere, but I had let myself get so anxious from watching the news that I was like, oh no, I've got it. I think I have it. I have coronavirus. Yeah. And for like a whole three days, I mean, I didn't even have really any of the symptoms. But in my head, my mind had taught myself into thinking that there was something wrong with me. Yeah, because that's some people catch corona through the eyeballs, literally watching the news. <laughs> like, because it becomes so palpable, we worry. So you have to have good boundaries. So let's say I'm watching the news or maybe my Instagram feed, you know, has CNN on it and like news broadcasts and, you know, maybe people that are just constantly putting out how many people are passing away. I need to really intrinsically check, just take a moment of self-reflection and say, what on my news feed do I just want to mute for this moment because it's too triggering? Or what on my TV do I need to put off on my TV? Maybe I need to turn the news off. The beautiful thing about boundaries is your intuition is always telling you when something is too much. It could be a person at work. You get this feeling when you come around them or you're like, oh God, here, here comes so-and-so. That's your discernment. That's your intuition. Listen to it. Even with coronavirus, if there's too many triggers on your phone, put the phone down. Or if there's too many triggers on your, your TV, Turn on Netflix, watch something that is totally unrelated, you know, preferably something very funny because mm -hmm. for your body to understand that you're not in danger, it needs to be sent a message. That's why people like really deep breathe, because if you're deep breathing, if you're taking the time to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, your brain receives a message. Oh, she's OK. There's nothing really happening right now because what will happen is when we get that anxious feeling, your brain can't discern whether you're at home watching the news or you're in an alleyway with a gun to your head. Your, your brain releases the same amount of cortisol and adrenaline. So we need to send a message to our body. We need to turn that TV off, maybe put that phone down, deep breathe a little bit, maybe put on something funny, maybe talk to a good friend that makes us laugh so that our body then gets the message, oh, okay, she's okay. Maybe she just overreacted to something. And then those cortisol levels can dissipate into our system. 
<laughs> yes, because <laughs> and I think I I had gone to a whole nother level. But like you said, I, uh, eventually we just sort of got to this place, my husband and I, where we started back to watch shows at night that we enjoy versus right. watching so much of the news. All like we were watching the news all the time. Yes, it becomes too much. And those are where you that's where your boundaries come into place for you. Sometimes, you know, I'll tell you too, Kyra, what I noticed around the, when there was, you know, the protesting happening and the George Floyd situation, people felt compelled. It's almost like when you drive by an accident, you just feel compelled to look. You want to mm-hmm. see, it's like that train wreck that you want to see. In those moments, sometimes your curiosity gets the best of you. That's okay. Don't judge or shame yourself about it, but do pay attention to, okay, what is it in those moments? Are you just being nosy? Do you feel compelled to look or, you know, oversaturate yourself with this information? Because, you know, there's some need that you're fulfilling. If you pay attention to what that need is, then you can kind of satisfy that emotion of anxiety. So, you know, we talk and I'm going to have you share that feeling wheel. Anytime that, you know, there's certain emotions, there's core emotions, sad, mad, scared, powerful, peaceful, joyful. If you are feeling anxious, the core root of that is scared. Ask yourself what need is not being met. Do I need to turn this news off because I need to laugh more? Or do I need to connect more? In your case, like you said, maybe I need more connection with my husband. Emotions are just your body's way of telling you there's a need not being met. Even anxious feelings. Maybe there's a need for security. Maybe I need to just turn this off because seeing all this social unrest is is really frightening me to make me think this could happen to me. And although it could, and I need to be informed, I don't need to oversaturate myself. I need to really gauge my own intuition and say, how much is too much for me? Now, your husband might want to still watch it. That's fine for him. But you got to gauge for you how much is too much for me. Mhm, mhm. And I will say that feelings wheel is something. <laughs> I remember the first time you pulled the feelings wheel out, and you made me go through the process. <laughs> right. I can well, still. You, I, ask people, you ask people, "How do you feel?" Good. I'd be like, "Good is not on that wheel." <laughs> <laughs> I know, and it's like, but. But get to the core of what makes you feel angry. Yes. <laughs> and I do I do love, too, that they're um, on that wheel. It's like, you know, tied to, I think anger is, actually, I have my wheel right here. And I'm going to pull it down. I'm just going to, I'm going to snap that down right now. Uh-oh. This is real life, people. So I, re- I remember um, like when I first came in and like feeling overwhelmed. Right. What's and, the core root? What's the core root? Right. Right. And it was so crazy, guys. Like I will say to you, like you when you definitely um, start going to therapy, it definitely you definitely have to just have an open mind about it, because I think people go in because even for me, even though I had an open mind, I think that I was afraid of like some of the like how I would be perceived right. in in the getting to the root cause. So when I felt overwhelmed, well, in the feelings will, it's tied to insecurity and anxious, which leads to, and also like the core emotion is ultimately you're scared. Right. <laughs> so I, can, I just remember you saying, but what are you, what are you afraid of? And in my case at the time I was, it was all tied to where we started, I would say on my journey, is that I was afraid of letting people down at my job. I was afraid of not being someone that someone could count on. So, and that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's you heavy. just- That's heavy. And so so the, the wheel definitely um, helps me. And I, um, of course, I printed it out for everybody on my team and started <laughs> handing them out and saying when people would say things, I'm like, okay, but how do you feel? Let's start on the outside and work our way in. <laughs> Very good. And that's, I mean, that's wisdom. You know, knowledge is power. And a majority of adults walking around don't know how they feel. If you don't believe me, we all got that friend. Sometimes they get drunk and it comes out. Sometimes it comes out anyway. And they just have this this breakthrough. I'd say breakthrough instead of breakdown. This breakthrough moment. And you're like, so-and-so, what's the matter? And they'd be like, I don't know. 
and they're telling the truth. They have no mm-hmm. idea because they haven't been able to take time for themselves engaged. How do I really feel? Good is not a feeling. We're stuck to that script. We're taught very young. Don't believe me. Pull a child out and say, Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Oh, how's your weekend? Oh, it's going fine. Have a good day. You as well. We all learned this script like back, back, back in the day. But right. when you are processing self-talk, internal dialogue, I don't need you saying good when you're not good. Maybe you don't want to tell the people at work or maybe people that you are, you know, aren't in your circle, but I need you to know how you feel. And if you are at the top part of that wheel, sad, mad, or scared, figure out what is causing that, what need is not being met to make you feel like that. You owe it to yourself to, to process that. Mm-hmm. No, that I, I love that. And I also have a question for you, obviously, because you are a parent. What do you say to what advice do you give to parents that may have these feelings? Like, do you recommend that they are honest with their children? How do you how do you handle that at home? Oh, yeah. You have to have very authentic dialogue. Now, of course, you have to gauge what your child's ages are. So let's say you have a five-year-old and they're very afraid about coronavirus and not getting to go back to school. Try your best, even at their age, to give them the tools that they need. There's feeling wheels even for that age group. You can literally Google feeling wheels for children and a bunch will come up. Teach them the right verbiage, like help them to verbalize their emotion so that they can release that because feelings are like water, right? They have to flow. You have to honor them. They have to flow. And what happens is if you don't allow that to happen, it wells up in you. And that's what creates a lot of overwhelm for people. So for children, ask them how they feel and help them process it. Now you, of course, let's say the child is five versus 15. You wouldn't go into a lot of detail about the realities and numbers and how scary it is. But I'm sure people with young children are having those conversations because now guess what? Kids have to wear masks. You have to explain to them what's happening, what they need to be afraid of, but not to overwhelm them, but to just inform them. And they're not going to school this year or they might go virtually. You have to explain to them why. I think one of the worst things that I know, and this is like, you know, we always joke about black households because I said so. That negates and dismisses children's voice. Teach your child that they have a voice. Teach them to be respectful with it. And they will. But give them Mm -hmm. time. You know, if you have to set up a weekly meeting in your household, just 30 minutes. Hey, let's check in with everybody. How's everybody feeling about what this pandemic is doing? Give them the time and make them feel like you're paying attention. Put that phone down turn that TV off, really pour into your children and give them a platform to speak their mind. Yes. No, I love that. Yes. I also do love the, because I say it so. <laughs> because I say it so, and really half the time, they don't know why either. And so they just go, because I say it so, because it sounds good. <laughs> exactly. But I definitely, I do, I, I agree with you um, there because, um, you know, in my house, that was, Um, probably when we finally got to a place of, you know, just being able to like move forward is just having, finally having a conversation where um, like in the previous episode um, where we were talking about relationships, uh, it was very similar to talking about how people, a lot of people arguing right now, a lot of people just having fights about nothing. And um, obviously I remember in one of my sessions, I think I told you like, yeah, but like the last three weeks, We've been over here fighting about like nothing, <laughs> like the smallest, like, oh, you looked at me wrong. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and so, but it was, it wasn't until like we, you know, after a while, it was just like time out. Mm-mm. Nope. Let's just sit down. Let me just tell you, like, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm afraid. Yes, I know God has me. God is in control. I know that, but I'm just coming to you and saying, because you, sir, you have to go to work every day. Yeah. So I have fears about you having to go out when I stay home. And so once we got to that place of just, you know, and then talking about, you know, not only for coronavirus, but because you go out and you're a black man. So once I was able to, you know, just put that out there and say, 
this is this is what's bothering me. This is why I'm sort of, you know, fidgety or whatever in this place. And then he gave that back to say, you know, well, yes, of course, you know, I have those fears too. But at the same time, I can't let that, you know, I have to go out. I know I have to go do these things so I can't live in, in that um, bubble of fear. So it, I, I agree with you. It is just sort of just making sure that you keep the communication lines open um, to have to express yourselves very open and be authentic you know try your best to really dig deep and like you said Kyra it's like a lot of couples argue over the trash don't nobody care about the trash yeah the trash stinks and we don't like it in the house but at the core root what are you feeling nobody's really arguing about the the little things it's something bigger and you got to get to the root of it so that you can stop all the the higher level or we call them like the little petty things that irritate us about our spouse or about our family or friends really get to the root and figure out what's really bothering you so you can verbalize it to them and then let it go away. Why hold on to that negative emotion? Exactly. Oh, no, that I think those are all very, very good suggestions that I think are very helpful, will be helpful to people. Um, so while we're talking about like going into relationships and connection, um, what about people, you know, obviously people are at home and people have started to feel, you know, lonely or isolated, can't see their friends, can't see their family. And not everybody's lucky enough to, you know, live, be in a house with somebody else. Um, yeah. <laughs> so at least that's why you're thankful for those arguments, because at least you have somebody in your house that you can argue with. Right. To get on your but, last nerve. <laughs> the very last one. <laughs> But um, what do you um, say to people that, you know, say, I miss my family and my friends and, you know, how can I connect? How can I feel connected outside of just a Zoom, you know, a Zoom call? What do you recommend for people? Yeah. And this and this time is so hard because I know we were talking in one of our sessions about, you know, we were getting to a place where we felt comfortable, kind of like, hey, let's meet at the Starbucks. I'll stay in my car. You stay in your car. Um, but we're not even at that place. We're almost kind of moving back into a place where we could possibly look at, you know, the second wave of quarantine or whatever. And so let's say you physically can't be near your loved one. I need y'all to honor it. The reason why a lot of these emotions are, again, not dissipating or a lot of these emotions because you're judging that emotion. There's so many people that say, well, I can't see my family, but at least I have a job. Okay honor that you miss your family honor that this whole thing kind of sucks without judging yourself for feeling like that or feeling ungrateful because you still have a job those two things don't have anything to do with each other honoring how you feel until you can be in their physical presence all we really do have is zoom try your best to connect via phone try your best to write letters this is a great self-reflective time journal send letters to people. That's so old school. I know people are like, with snail mail? That's so old, but it connects you. We (laughs) have to utilize, because that physical presence has been taken from us, it requires us to get very creative. Again, maybe once things kind of settle down, we can go back into like, hey, let's meet at the drive-in. I'll stay in my car. You stay in your car. Um, Some people I've seen have done like social distance, like working out. You're in front of your house, your neighbor's in front of their house, just so you can have that emotional connection and physical presence and everybody kind of puts music out. I've seen a lot of creative ideas for people to get together with people that they normally see. But if that's not an option, let's say worst case scenario, that happens where we have to go back in and we're not able to kind of physically connect with people or see them then let's go to letters. Let's go to the Zoom calls. Let's really try to be very creative. I know people that have met during the quarantine and just virtually dated. So people are getting pretty creative. Um, Yes. Getting creative. Try your best to first honor the emotion. Honor that you miss them. Honor that this whole thing sucks. And, you know, this isn't what any of us planned as far as 2020. Or if you have a birthday and you couldn't have your party, honor that. Honor that emotion and it will leave you. It's when you try to justify it or judge it that it sticks to you and then it creates underlying resentment. Mm-hmm. Or have a Zoom birthday party. Yes, <laughs> virtual birthday virtual parties. parties. Virtual yes. parties. You know, like get back on the phone. Just 
like hearing somebody's voice it instantly like a little dopamine will be excreted from your brain when we're really intrinsically joyful and sometimes it's just that phone call with a loved one that kind of you know I know if I ever call my best friend I've had the same best friend for 30 years we get on the phone I'm feeling super hyped up happy at the end of that call and it doesn't even have to be a FaceTime call it can just be us giggling and cackling on the phone (laughs) right right but do honor your emotion whatever it is and a lot of people are trying to justify or almost beating themselves up for feeling the way that they feel because maybe they do have a good job that they can work remotely or they are healthy honor that but don't judge it don't judge it because people are in a worse situation or maybe they're struggling because that's you know that does negate your own voice we got to really be honest and open and turn up the volume on our voice and to do that we can't judge it Mm -hmm. no I like that because I think that is something you said that was super super key is you know because you'll see people just say for example you'll have people who are you know maybe searching for a job you know they may have a job but then they may be looking for something different and they maybe were looking before all this happened, you know, but then I think a lot of times people just sort of turn to, well, I'm just, I'm just blessed. I have a job. So, you know, but I think, like you said, you can still be, still have gratitude and be thankful for that. But also, you know, the, the problems that Mm -hmm. you had before, they didn't go away because of coronavirus. They're still disappointed that you had to cancel that trip or cancel your birthday, honor that disappointment and, and separate it from the gratitude that you feel for your job. A lot of times we lump emotions together and one makes you feel guilty. Like if I lump those two together, well, dang, I can't have my party, but at least I have a job. Then that makes me feel ungrateful and I'm going to feel guilty and feel ashamed that here I am thinking about my birthday when people don't have a job. Listen, I can have two emotions. I can have multiple emotions at the same time. Let me separate that disappointment for Corey's party. And I'm speaking from real. I was supposed to have a party like in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so if this example seems real, it's real. <laughs> I can have my disappointment for my party that I can no longer have thanks to Rona and I can still feel grateful to work with my clients virtually. I don't need to lump those emotions together because one is going to trigger guilt and shame in me and I don't want that. Right. Okay. (laughs) I like that. Um, So what about couples? How can they use all this time that they have together where they can't go out, you know, on their regular date night? So obviously now this People have to deal with problems that have always been problems because they can't run from them. And those problems are magnified. Those little triggers that you had before are probably huge triggers now because we have a lot more time to focus in and we have a lot less distraction. Um, Before in our busy, busy lives, we didn't sit around each other. We were working. We're rushing home. We're getting dinner. We're going to get our... We were very busy before and distracted. So now couples don't have those distractions. So you're right. Their little issues are magnified. So what I tell people is use this time to really get to the core root again. Y'all going to get sick of me like, hey, here she go with that core root. Because there's always something underneath the little frustrations that kind of live on top. So verbalize it, figure out, okay, it's not that the trash isn't being taken out. Maybe I feel like I'm doing more chores than him, or maybe I'm frustrated at this, or maybe like really get to the core root of what's bothering you, communicate it. Then when your needs are being met, as far as emotions, y'all need to get creative. Let me tell you, I have heard some creative dating going on, you know, in the house. I had a client tell me he put a whole tent out. And he decorated the living room like it was a a campsite. And there were candles and, you know, they made little s'mores in the microwave. Like, you know, there's no excuse to not create some type of at-home date. Like, there's a link, and I'm going to share it with you, Kyra, so you can share it. There's 30 at-home date night ideas. Have a picnic inside. Or maybe you have a patio out back. Maybe you have a backyard. You know, have something within the constraints of still being safe. But do something different. You know, have a drive-in movie night in your living room. Move that couch to the wall and lay out a blanket on the floor. Like, you don't have any excuse not to try to come up with something. This is really calling on people's creativity, but it should be fun. Like, it should be like, okay, 
this is really stripping us of a lot of our luxuries. And maybe I can't go to that expensive restaurant my wife likes to go to, but let me try to make this stuff at home. Or maybe if I feel safe, I can do a, you know, a door dash, have them deliver it, but I'm going to move the table to the living room and make it like a restaurant and play French music and light a candle. Like mm-hmm. get creative within the yes. constraints of Corona. Corona don't have to stop romance. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we, um, yeah, we definitely have one night out of the weekend where we still we do Uber Eats as like our date night meal, and there's no cooking, and um, and the backyard has just really become like the new paradise. I mean, I really hate. I'm not an outside person, but I have um, I have adapted to being outside. Um, you know, on the patio and we watch movies out there and we have a, a, a pool in the back now. So Ooh. yesterday in the, I mean, probably the hottest part of the day yesterday, <laughs> we were like outside. I was just out there floating, just having a good time. In the good life. Can't nobody tell you you're not in Cancun as somebody before. <laughs> no, I was that Corona still your joy. You better be out there in that pool. Exactly. Living up within the constraints of still feeling safe. I love that. Yeah. You deserve yeah. it. Like really kind of put those creative juices to work. Sit down with your partner and come up with an idea. Maybe there's an idea that you'd like to share. Like don't always expect your partner to know what you'd like. You know, really verbalize it like, hey, babe, it'd be great if we can turn our living room into a fancy French restaurant. Usually when we communicate our needs to people, if it's very clear, the expectation is clear, we'll get what we want from our partner. But just sitting there thinking, sure, it'd be nice if he could read my mind and create a French restaurant. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and then you're going to be pissed off mad looking at him and he's like, what I do? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so, I mean, I feel like you're just like hitting them on the head because that is like a conversation I had with somebody recently. I'm like, yeah, like you can't read his mind so you can't expect him to read yours but it, we do that and then we get mad like we're just immediately upset because you didn't know that I wanted you like you said to turn this um, family room into a French restaurant so yeah it it's that it definitely it just goes back to like you said open open communication yeah or some people say well well I just want him to know it. I want him to take initiative or I want her to know what I want Well, sometimes your partner will guess and get it right, but more times than not, you're going to be disappointed and you're going to be disappointed for no reason because nobody said that romance has to be equated with them reading your mind. Is it not romantic when you tell them to turn your living room into a French restaurant that he actually pulls the couch back and creates that environment? Isn't that just as romantic? You know what I mean? Exactly. Sometimes we set the bar so high And it's almost self-sabotage because until you verbalize what you expect, now I'm and I'm telling you from experience. When I tell you, and my husband will laugh and he'll tell you the truth. I've had some horrible gifts throughout our uh, (laughs) horrible. I mean, I got a dog blanket one year, and it was like, well, what? You like blankets and you like dogs? Well, I don't want a a blanket covered with dog eyes. I mean, it was just weird. But to him, it made sense. He's thinking, well, she likes dogs. <laughs> like, yes. This, this blanket had dog eyes. It was no dog face. It was just a bunch of eyeballs all over this blanket. <laughs> so I learned very early, Mm-mm, I have to communicate my expectations. <laughs> and sometimes he'll surprise me and get it right. But for the most part, our partners are not mind readers. So in this pandemic, don't utilize that as an excuse not to be romantic. Get creative and romantic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still laughing because I actually got one of a, a doll blanket from Max for Christmas. Oh, so no, it, it, it makes sense. In front of yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have mind if it had the whole dog face. I just got a bunch of dog eyeballs, and I'm like, this is creepy. <laughs> dog eyeballs all over. Oh my god. <laughs> I always tell people that story like, listen, I was so heated. And then I really thought I didn't tell him anything to get. So that was my fault. <laughs> Although I would love to see a picture of that dog. <laughs> that thing is somewhere in the trash. I couldn't even, I was so heated that day. This is years ago. I can laugh about it now. I was oh my God. It was my birthday. Like 
dog eyed blanket. <laughs> Anyways, I, 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 <laughs> I am almost like I'm crying. <laughs> Dog eyes, but you love dogs, and you okay. Um, no, I got to be clear in my <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, okay, I'm coming back. <laughs> so, how how important? Because we have talked about this a lot. Um, how important is empathy right now during these times? Oh, it's it's so important. It's always important. But we really have to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And I love that you brought empathy up. People confuse that. Sympathy is feeling sad for someone. And empathy is actually trying to pause and put yourself in that person's shoes. Because if I'm sympathetic, I'll be like, oh, that sucks. That's sad. But if I'm empathetic, I'll pause and take a moment and try my best to say, well, how would I feel if that happened to me? Those are two totally different things. So it is very important to be empathetic. Understand that everybody is just struggling with this, y'all. We are all struggling. And it, being empathetic, it, it really takes you from a place of being just in your own space, being that, you know, that egocentric view of how am I feeling and putting yourself into the shoes of your partner or your children. Let me tell y'all, when I heard you know, all this stuff was going to mess up another school year. I felt so bad for seniors. I don't even have a senior in my house, but I was just empathetic and thought, how would I feel if my senior year, I'm all the way through school, you know what I mean? Like whether it's high school or college and it's mm-hmm. going to be marred with this. Now, of course, it's better for them to be virtual because they, they need to be safe. But I'm saying, let's imagine none of this ever happened. They would be living there. You know, they finally met that, you know, met that mark for them to have all that you know, in the first week of school, there's usually like seniors get to dress up and they get to really have that whole year as a celebration. So I've been really empathetic lately. Again, I don't even have a senior in my house right now, but I've been really empathetic for other people's children. So put yourself in the shoes of your children, maybe your spouse, maybe people in your family that are struggling. Cause when you are empathetic, you'll reach out. You'll be more patient with people. You'll just move in a different way. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, I, yeah, I think that's so important. And whenever people struggle with it, it's just hard when you are a person that feels empathy and it's easy for me to put myself in somebody else's shoes. And um, when people are like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know how they feel. You know, it's always like, let me, just, <laughs> let me just shake you and slap your face. <laughs> right. <laughs> And we're very dismissive. When we're sympathetic with someone, we're very dismissive and we negate their emotion. But when we're empathetic, we really take the time. We're, we give them more grace. We give more patience to a situation when we're empathetic, sure. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's great. And so lastly, how can people look at you know this opportunity as a way to personally grow? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Um, A lot of people felt a lot of pressure when the pandemic first started. There was a lot of Instagram and social media messaging, like write that book, sis. And if you don't, if you don't start that podcast now, it wasn't time. It was your discipline. Like a lot of people felt forced into doing things before that they may have said, listen, if you don't want to write a book right now, if maybe is not the time for you to start a podcast, just honor that. Part of that is just being reflective in what you need in this moment. Cognitively, we are just all trying to make it through this. This is very overwhelming. This makes you feel trapped. This pandemic makes us, it triggers powerlessness in us. It triggers helplessness. It triggers a lot of fear about finances. So maybe you can write a book during this moment. Hey, I high five you. But if you can't, please honor yourself and just use this time as a self-reflective period to just, you know, I always tell people if you want to lay on the couch and watch Netflix and you have it within your schedule to do that, honor that that's what you needed in that moment. Relaxation is a need, you know, just kind of taking time away. If you want to kind of play a game or maybe a game on your phone, play an adventure is a need. So honor whatever it is you need in that moment. And again, if you're able to do things and this is the time for you to learn a new language, you're winning. But if not, and you're watching, you know, Netflix for seven hours, guess what? You're winning too, because that's what you wanted to do in that moment. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, if you cause sometimes sometimes you just need that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and what if you got <laughs> no shame, no judgment and shame, sitting in pajamas all day if you need to. Yes, <laughs> self reflective time, and that's love. Like we love ourselves through actions and being quiet and loving enough to yourself to say, "What do I want to do today? Have I done mm-hmm. my work? Okay, I've done my work. So what do I want to do?" Okay, kids are good. My husband, okay, or she's good. My wife is good. What do I want to do? You know, people don't even know what they like to do. I always challenge people. If you can't name right now five things that are happy for you and five things that make you feel like you're having fun, I need you to work on that. You should know five things off the top of your head that make you happy and five things that you really enjoy doing for fun. If you can't name those five things for happy and five things for fun, Use this time to figure out what you like to do. Yes, I like that. I I never really thought about it like that because like you said, a lot of people, you know, a lot of us just have like, like for me, I was, oh, I remember telling you, I was like, oh, I have a whole list of things. I'm so excited. I have all this time now and I can do things in my house and all this stuff that I've been wanting to do. But you're right. There are some people that are just sort of like, "Mm, what do I do? I'm bored, you know, or I I mean, I remember hearing people um, saying like, oh my gosh, I'm so bored or I don't know, like I got to get out of this house and I'm, and I've just been really the complete opposite the whole time is to be like, no, no, (laughs) (laughs) not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I got to (laughs) live. Right. I got stuff to do. And you're right. You were able to really pivot. And that's the key word with this pandemic. Can I pivot? I went kicking and screaming into virtual sessions. I hated teletherapy before this started. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I love in person. I want y'all to smell my new candle I bought. I want y'all to hear my (laughs) music in the background, right? I was stuck in that. But I had to pivot and just for the safety of myself and my clients, start to offer virtual sessions. And now I love it. I love virtual sessions. So pivoting is that keyword. What is something that you can do in this moment that now you have the time to say, okay, maybe I didn't have time before, but maybe I would like to try this new hobby. Maybe photography is my passion and I've just been too busy before this to take it back up. Or maybe I want to paint. Maybe I want to cook. Maybe I want to read. Maybe I do want to sit around and watch that latest season of whatever, which my favorite show right now would be um, I just finished Game of Thrones and I know I'm like 10 years too late, but I, when I tell you, I just got so into that show. People years ago tried to get me to watch. I never had the time to get into it. So my husband and I both, we became such Game of Thrones fans. And listen, do I need to be writing a book? Probably. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to delay and watch Game of Thrones. So I honored that when I wasn't working. <laughs> He and I, like literally, we went through all eight seasons of Game of Thrones together and loved it. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> well, I will applaud you for that because I I didn't ever get into it. And people kept telling me, oh, yeah, oh, you need to watch it. I and- would love it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you look at it with a different perspective now because we do have more time to understand because I do not like, I don't like dragons. I don't like fairy things, magical things. When I tell you I love Game of Thrones and I know everybody's like, okay, she's like 20 years late. I know, I got y'all. I know, I'm late. (laughs) But I loved, I fell in love through, Corona helped me to fall in love with Game of Thrones. And I know it's over now. You're right. Find things that maybe you overlooked before because you didn't have the time to appreciate them. Mm-hmm. And so, and last, I will ask you something um, just in general for people. Um, what advice do you give to people um, about therapy? You know, there are a lot of people out there like, oh, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, I need to. Yeah, I need to find a therapist. Oh, I want to go or I need to find somebody. But um, they don't ever really make the move to do it. Like they're just pondering it. But what I tell everybody is if you're even thinking about it, listen to that voice. There's some intuitive things happening within you and you're realizing maybe even on a subconscious level that you have things you want to talk about with someone who will not judge you. You know, one of the first things that people ask me like, what happens during the first session? We're just going to get to know each other. I'm going to get an idea of what your goals are. But the first thing, and you might remember Kyra, I always say, listen, I've done this for so long. 
I have heard everything at least 12 times. And the reason why I start with that is because more people don't go to therapy because they're afraid of being judged or they're afraid that they're going to look a certain way. Listen, therapists honestly are there and they're an unbiased person, unlike family and friends who really, you know, they love you, but they're not able to be unbiased. They're already on your side and you might get good advice. You might not, or you might get good guidance. But therapists are truly there not to judge you, but to help guide you to whatever your goals are. And I always start off with that because I think that's the one thing that keeps people from reaching out. And the only thing I can do is kind of equate it to going to the doctor. When I go to the doctor, whether it's for my, you know, gynecological visit, I it's still a little uneasiness. But then when I think, you know what, this person done seen like 10 vaginas already today. My little vagina is not going to stand out to them in one bit so I can go in there get what I need and go about my way. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happens with therapy is I promise you therapists are not there to get caught up and legally confidentiality wise, we legally can't say anything to anybody. Nobody can call up and get information about your session. So one, you have confidentiality legally. Someone would lose their license if they breached your confidentiality, unless, of course, you said you were going to hurt yourself or someone else. Now, that's a whole different thing. But by law, it's a person there to listen to you that can't tell anybody what you said. That, to me, should be powerful anonymity enough for you to go and kind of get some things off your chest. But if you need more, like, further push, understand that they're all there. We're all there to help you guys to win. I put on my Instagram, I love to see my clients win. A lot of times people are in their own way and they just won't get out of their own way. They don't have the tools. So when you understand that a therapist is there, one, to not judge you, two, to hold secret what you say, and three, to help guide you to your goals, you will call. That voice is that voice is telling you to call for a reason. There's something that you want to talk about or some obstacle that's in your way cognitively or emotionally that you want to get out. Just make the call. Choose five people online that you see that you might be interested in. Go to Psychology Today and I'll send you these links, Kyra, so you can post them. Open Path Collective. If you can't afford a therapist, some people say, well, I want to talk to a therapist, but I can't afford it. You can go to Open Path Collective. They see people based on a sliding scale and usually it's between $30 and $60. For couples, it's usually $80. Um, go to Open Path. I'll give you the link for that. Go to Therapy for Black Girls. Maybe people say, well, I want a therapist that looks like me. Go to Open, I mean, go to Therapy for Black Girls. So you can really find five people, interview them, call them, say, I want to set up a consultation, have your questions ready. You're hiring someone. So I want you to feel empowered in this, you know, scenario, because once you find somebody you really can vibe with, who you really feel like, yo, this person gets me, you're going to meet your goals. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so, so very true. And I I love that advice. Um, And yes, people, she is wonderful, but you cannot have her. Um. (laughs) You know, know, I didn't say go to my website. I am book booked. (laughs) I have your room. I am. And I, I wish I could. And it's hard when people call me and email me. I have some of the best emails from you know, potential clients, I hate to reply back with, I'm not accepting new clients at this time, but y'all, I really have to have that boundary because for my clients, I am available. People can text me, they can call me and I know therapists are not going to like that. I'm saying that because they're going to be like, that's not, we don't want people thinking for me and how I do my business, how I run my practice, I need to be available for my clients outside of session as well sometimes. And I can't take on too many people and still be available like that. So no, I'm not in the position to accept new clients. But if you go to Therapy for Black Girls, Psychology Today or Open Path Collective, you can find somebody that you vibe with that will work for you. Yes, you can. You too can find your own Dr. Corey. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, and glow up, girl. Glow up, girl. Yes. What about if they're men? Glow up, man. <laughs> exactly. Well, I thank you so much. This is so awesome, and I know that the audience too will just love your um. Just are open, and, and I mean, guys, you see why I love her. I mean, she's very open and just very honest, and you just get like you you get it. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Good. Well, I am so happy 
to just have the opportunity to talk with you. This is so fun. I'm so proud of you. So I want to take this time to make sure you pause and pat yourself on the back. It's not easy to put yourself out there and even to kind of the podcasting part. I know you're very techie. And so this technological part might be a little easy for you, but it's not easy to have a baby. This glow up girl is like your baby. And so when you have it and you send it out every week or you send it out every time you have a podcast or you do an event, it takes a lot of vulnerability. So I wanted to congratulate you and tell you, I'm very proud for you to be living in your passion and your purpose and inspiring other people. Thank you. I'm like a child. <laughs> you should see me over here just cheesy. I know. I wish I could see because mom been like super cheesy the whole time. <laughs> well, again, guys, um, I just, I, I just, I, I can't say enough about, you know, therapy myself. Um, like I said, I'm coming up on a year and it's the best thing I ever did for myself to help me um, just learn more about me as, and establish boundaries. And it is the thing that led to Glow Up Girl. This is what got me to my passion um, and purpose of Glow Up Girl because so many people are still women are doing what I was doing to myself in which Dr. Corey helped me to get to a place of, Hey, guess what? You're not prioritizing yourself. You're putting everything, everybody else before you and, and your needs. And, um, she helped me to get to a place of, um, not feeling guilty about choosing Kyra. So when you get there, um, it could be so much better. <laughs> um, and as you told me, when I can pick me and I choose myself and prioritize me, everybody else gets the best Kyra, the best mm-hmm. version of me. And when you first told me that, it you know, it didn't all make sense, but now, you'll look, get look, you'll get it. It's one of them driving home. You'll be like, Oh, that's what she meant. <laughs> yes. And now I totally like what full circle, like understand that and get that. And because now I'm able to do something like this because I was able to finally choose Kyra. Good. So Good. again, I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. Thank you to you. Thank you right. um, for all, all the time. And thank you for joining us um, today. So Guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a minute. Are you ready to start a podcast but don't know where to start? Well, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. It's free. There's an easy creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be easily heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. Thank you again to Dr. Corey Lee for joining us and giving us some amazing tips and tools that we can use um, while coping during this time. And thank you all again for joining the podcast. I really, really, really appreciate all of your support. Um, If you're not following us on Instagram, find us at Glow Up Girl. And also drop us an email at hello at glowupgirl.com if you have any comments, feedback, or anybody that you think we should be talking to and sharing their story on our show. Before I go, I'd like to leave you with a little glow inspiration. Today um, comes from a quote from Mark Cuban, wherever there is change and wherever there is uncertainty, there is always opportunity. So until next time, stay focused, fabulous, and glow up.